What's up, y'all? We back <laughs> another week. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Dorea has her computer right here, and she's doing some work. So I am a hardworking queen. <laughs> yep. Maria, what are you laughing at? I'm laughing at what you just said. First of all, I'm laughing at how you popped off the podcast and the fact that you was flaming Dre for having her computer out. And I must not flex. She does look like them people at Starbucks that just got their computer out. They don't be doing shit. They just be drinking so They just be drinking coffee. They don't be doing That's shit. That's what I should have did. I should have stopped and got my coffee. I am dead. <laughs> real professional. Um, so let me just say this. I did say I wanted to start the podcast off with a little disclaimer. I need anybody who tunes in, any of our listeners, anybody who doesn't listen and just tune in once every now and then I need y'all to know that this is a very light hearted podcast like we make Mm -hmm. jokes on here we talk about everybody on here it's not meant to be taken seriously this is not a podcast you need to listen to if you're looking for something serious and this and that this is not what this is or if you get easily offended or if you get easily offended because we talk about everybody like I've been talked about on here we done talked about screen we done talked about everybody on here so yeah we talk about our damn selves yeah so I just need everybody that serious it ain't that serious and you know don't think that it's like you know, we're being weirdos or upset. Don't like, be flattered. Don't be flattered, yeah. So, let's get into it. Um, What's been going on this past week? How was your week? My week was good. Um, I didn't have anything super exciting going on this mm-hmm. weekend, but I'm excited about going to Houston on Friday because I haven't been to Houston since 2019. Yeah. I'm, so I'm excited Houston, about man. going home this Friday. I'll be there all weekend. You know, I'm trying to collab with some podcasts. Yeah, so if and any podcast out there, if y'all listening, make sure y'all hit uh, hit us up so Drea can come on your show. Yeah, I'm trying to collab with some people, and I'm just so excited about eating. And then, you know, it's rodeo. So oh, yeah. I'm excited about going to the rodeo carnival. I'm coming to Houston soon, but I just got to wait because my sister just had my nephew. Mm-hmm. So we have another addition to the family. Yay. But um, Little he, peanut. He, little peanut. Little, he's so cute, y'all. He oh, my cute. God. He's so cute. But um, he was a preemie, so he's still in the hospital. But he's doing very well. He's growing and gaining weight every day. But, you know, they have to weigh a certain amount before. And they have yeah. to do certain things before they can leave the hospital. Mm-hmm. So whenever he gets better and he's out the hospital, that's when I'm going to come home okay but um as far as me like i'm kind of upset i'm not gonna lie why are you upset? because we were supposed to go to dallas oh we were supposed to go to dallas the weekend mm. after this week we were supposed weekend. to yeah we we're supposed mm. to go to dallas because i was going to see nigerian bay because uh-huh. i really miss my man i was telling right. you that yesterday like you know i just feel like when you're in a long distance situation you just kind of need their energy around you. And I just really kind of need his energy right now just because, I don't know, I've just been, this weather has kind of had me off. Like, mm-hmm. seasonal depression is real. And I don't want to say I'm depressed, but this weather out here has just kind of had me in a, like, a uh, funky mood. So I'm like, I just need to suck some dick. Wow. The I weather need- <laughs> is finally getting back nice, though. I mean, I'm hoping that it stays like this because the weather has been very pleasant. Yeah, it was days. nice this past weekend, mm-hmm. like, you know. But, yeah, I just feel like I just need to be around him. I need some dick, and I just need some good conversation. I just need to be around my man, you know what I'm saying? Um, I went out with my roommate this weekend mm-hmm. with Jazz. Uh, shout out to Jazz. Jazz got her a BDB. Where she found him at? Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you the tea. But, yeah, Jazz had a, got her a BDB, honey, and he took us out all weekend. Just tell the girls where y'all went. Oh, uh, Friday we <laughs> ran shaking his head. <laughs> Friday we went you to you know, we be trying to put his the money girls on, both on the of y'all. Huh? He, she said he took us both out. He did. And That's actually, he posted. And then he took my other friend. My other friend was out here from L.A., so wow. it was like all three of us. So, Friday we went to Sweet. Um, Saturday, I had went to an event. I had went to um, Waka Flocka's mom's surprise birthday party, and that was really fun. Mm-hmm. So I went there, and then after I left there, I went to, uh, where did we go? No, Saturday we went to Sweet. Friday we went to, uh, what's that What's that club name? Boogaloo. Oh, okay, Boogaloo. Boogaloo. So, yeah, girl, he bought me my own hookah, and y'all know how I am about my hooks. I don't Nobody like to share the hooks. So he was like, Lex, what you need? I said, oh, I need a hookah. He was like, oh, I got you. I said, I like him. Man, I hope he got some. Bro, oh, I'm dead. Y'all, I, bro, I hope wait. he blew her back out, bro. I, I hope he am blew it all the way. <laughs> I, I can't saying. wait until Lent is over so I can drink. I feel like I be having to be like in the house yeah, so that you, I won't do nothing bad. Yeah, because if you come to the club, you're going to be taking shots. You like, think so? Absolutely. But I've been working and I don't be taking shots at work. That's because you're working. If but you, I don't be really like that busy. Like, mm-hmm. and people be offering me shots, but I be like, mm, no, I'm not going to take one. I got 30, 29 more days, y'all. And you've done good. You I haven't have. had one sip, not one drop. So we're proud and of you. And especially hanging around Kiki, it's tough. 
Because Kiki loves a good glass of wine. <laughs> Shout out to little Kiki. So, yeah, um, the 20th, we were supposed to go to Dallas. We're not going anymore. But we are opening for Horrible Decisions for their live show out here. Yes. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, and I haven't seen Mandy in a minute, so I'm excited to hang out with Mandy. So, yeah, that's going to yeah. be lit. We're going to be turned up. So if y'all out here... Make sure y'all come to the Horrible Decision Show on, um, what's this month? March 20th. Yeah, I think it's sold out, though. Oh, it is? I don't know. I think it is. Oh, well, shit. If you ain't got your tickets yet, I don't know Sorry for you. you Sorry for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is, um, I wanted to talk about customer service. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about this because I used to work in the industry. I want to talk about customer service and black people specifically. Mm -hmm. Because I always feel like people are so hard on black people, for one. But two, I do also feel like sometimes we do need to work on our customer service okay so the reason i want to have this conversation because um last me week my item of the week was my nails i got my nails done by a girl named Sharnice, and we had this conversation because when i first walked into her shop she was very quiet mm -hmm. you know she was just kind of like you know she wasn't really having conversation which that's fine i don't know what type of day you had i don't know what you've had going on mm -hmm. and i know how it is like i don't be pressed to, for people to be like i don't like small talk anyway but we eventually started talking and we ended up having a bomb ass conversation. And she was like, and I just want to tell you, thank you for not like tripping on me because, you know, I just have a lot of stuff going on at home and I just, I, my mind wasn't here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And she was like, I've actually had people complain about me and be like, I'm rude and I'm this and I'm that. I was like, girl, no, I didn't think he was rude. I was over here with my eyes closed, just in la la land anyway. Right. So I just want to talk about why do people expect to go and get a service and just expect for people to be like, oh, girl, how are you? What are you doing? Like, you know what I mean? Like, do you expect that? No, I actually would prefer for your ass to not talk to me. I'm dead. You don't like to be talked to, like, no, at all? Not really. I mean, like, of course, greet me. Right, yeah. When I come in and I'm going to greet you. But, like, it actually kind of annoys me when I go get a service and girls be trying to have, like, long conversations with me. Yeah. Like, oh, where are you from? What you doing out here? What do you do out here? Yeah. Like, oh, do you got a boyfriend? Like, oh, boo I don't know. Like, I no, let's just not. Mm -hmm. I just feel let's like. Let's do my lashes. Right, that's how I feel, too. <laughs> I really do feel like and that. And let me take a nap. Like, I feel, I'm okay. Like, if you want to talk, cool. If you don't, that's cool as well. I don't know. I just hate the fact that people put so much pressure, on, especially, like, black women. Like, they feel like we're supposed to just go above and beyond. But let me tell y'all something. When y'all go into these... I don't get offended by that. When y'all go into these nail shops with, like, you know, like, the Asian people, they not always friendly either. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like people just expect so much from black people when it comes to... To customer service like we have to go above and beyond when it comes to anything like i feel like white people asian people any other race they it's okay with them being mediocre with their customer service mm -hmm. because they're not black but when it's a black person and if we just miss one greeting or say something wrong it's like oh my god this is why i don't shop with black people this mm -hmm. is why i don't do this with black people and i'm like and we're really like that with each other so is that like across the board or black people dealing with black people um, I think it's mainly with black people dealing with black people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I feel right. like we are so hard on each other. And I told myself, like I said that last week, I'm making an effort to, you know, shop with more black companies, work mm -hmm. with more black people. But it's just like, I feel like we need to give the same energy to black people as we give to other races. Do like, you think, like, do you think um, black people do that because they just want the standard for us to be good? Because, I mean, most black people don't want to see black people doing bad. Right, of course. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I think that's what they say. I think that, exactly. Yeah. I think that's what they say. But y'all, like I said. But when it comes to supporting people, it'd be a whole different narrative. And not only. Especially when money's involved. That's right. right. Exactly. But like I said, they don't have the same energy with other people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if they'll go into a store and shop, a white person won't say anything to them, but you still just going to go in there, buy your T-shirt and leave, and you're not even going to think twice about it. But if you go into, like, Rashida's boutique and the lady at the cat and there's somebody, oh, my God, I went to Rashida's boutique and the lady at the cash well, register didn't say nothing to me. We are talking me. about Rashida. And well, unfortunately I do think it's rude to not say anything to somebody. Like, no, when you I agree. go and check out and you got them people who don't even be like, hey, how your day going? That's rude. No, I agree with you on that, but I'm saying they don't have that same energy when they're going into other stores. I don't, I don't you know think Rashid is a good example because let's be fair, we're not gonna act like people don't go to her store to find something to complain about. Like people want right. people want to go in there and have a shade room on yeah. it. Like, oh my god, this store but dirty. That's messed up. It is messed up. So I feel like that's just not a fair example. I mean, but I, I'm you know, just talking it, about like.
like black business owners. I feel like when we go into black spaces, a lot of times, a lot of times, like you said, they're looking to complain about things. Right. And I think that is so, I think that's not, I think that's not right. I do feel like people as a whole need to work on customer service because mm-hmm. I've been plenty of places where the customer service was just not there and it has nothing to do with race. Mm-hmm. But if I'm going to complain, I'm going to, I'm sorry, maybe this might sound racist, but I'm going to complain about a white person before I complain about a black person. I don't think that's racist. I don't care. I don't think that's standing up for I, I just don't. I don't think that's racist. I just feel, because at the end of the day, like I, I said. I don't think it's racist either. I think, I don't know. I just feel like black people, uh, some of us, we really just be wanting to support black people and give them right. the, like our money. But I don't know. I feel like white people and black people be having terrible, terrible customer service. I done been some places where, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, white people don't give the best customer service either. Right. And that's why I said, like, I am making it an effort, like, to only go to the nail shop, like, to get my toes done. Like, because that's, like, the cheapest thing I get done there anyway. <laughs> pedicure, $25, okay? You know what I'm saying? Like, I really Bitch, don't where want... you be going for a pedicure that's $25? Well, you know I live on the east side. Oh, well, oh yeah. you don't get jail on your toes. Yes, do I you? do. Don't try to play me. Yes, I do, bitch. Yes, I fucking do. <laughs> I wasn't do. trying to play you. I asked the question. Baby, hold on, baby. I got I got a little money now. I got $4. And you $4. getting a jail pedicure for $25? Yes. Where? The one next to, um, the one I always go to. The one, uh... Oh, um, yeah. 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 That's crazy. Well... At my nail shop, it'd be like $40 well, for I, a jail maybe they'll Maybe it's like 35 Maybe they'll like add $10, I yeah. think. But I don't ever... I don't be paying much at all, child. Yeah. But I get jail on the feet. Don't do me now. Because, you, y'all, look, I'm happy now. I got some expensive heels this weekend, so Ooh, I don't know wee. how to act. I don't now know how to keep them toes done. I gotta keep them done. I gotta keep them done. But, yeah, I just wanted to address that really quick. Because, like I said, I, um... I just feel like a lot of times we expect black people just to go above and beyond, but you don't give that same expectations to other races. Now, I do feel like everybody, if you're working in customer service, everybody needs to go above and beyond. That's yeah. just because that's how I used to be when I was working in customer service. But like I said, if you don't have that same energy for other races, then you don't need to have it for your own race. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, if you're not going to care, you need to not care all across the board. Yeah. So that's just what I have to say on I that. I agree. I agree. That's that on that. Okay, so I wanted to talk about this as well, because y'all know people be weirdos. Um, oh, sorry. I just got a text. Um, I want to talk about social media again. Y'all know we always talk about social media. But I think that there's, like, unwritten weird rules on social media. So I really wanted to talk to you about this because you do have a lot of followers on Instagram. So I had an instance um, a couple of days ago where I was tweeting this guy. And we know each other. We've actually, like, been in the same vicinity before. We've hung out before. And we were, like, tweeting back and forth because we have a mutual friend. I was like, oh, shit, let me just follow him or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, not that I cared that he didn't follow me back or didn't you know but I feel like a lot of times people feel like oh I'm verified or oh I have a lot of followers so I'm not following you first you got to follow me first you know what I'm saying like have you ever felt like you had to follow somebody like they had to follow you first before you follow them back um yeah why though I, I feel know. like if you want to follow I, well, somebody I'm, you but, should just follow them yeah but I don't never really want to follow people to be honest Oh Lord! Like I go. only, fo- I'm just saying, I only follow people that I know. Like pretty much everyone that I follow mm. on Instagram is people that I know, or it's people that listen to the show that I feel like, oh, they always supporting us, mm. they always reposting us. Right. Let me, you know, follow them back. Mm-hmm. I don't just never randomly go follow people. I rarely even follow. I don't think I even follow that many celebrities. Well, not well, not random people. I'm saying like somebody that you know, like maybe y'all. Well, don't if I know, know you, I'm gonna follow you. So you don't wait for them to follow you first. No. See, that's what I'm talking because about. Because I know you're gonna follow me back. And if you don't, I'm about to unfollow you. That's how I feel, though. Because I'm like, I know you in real life. Why are you not following yeah. me back? I think that's I'll so I'll follow weird. you first. I won't wait for you to follow me. But it's like, bitch, once you see that I'm following you, if you don't follow me back after a few days, I'm about to unfollow your ass. Right. I feel like some people, they probably ain't posting nothing interesting no way. I'm dead. I feel like, I think social media just makes people <laughs> so weird. Like, we talked about that the other day, like, acting like you don't know people. We don't want to get too deep on that topic Look, again. You, you ruffled some feathers <laughs> last week. You better calm. You better cool it now. No, but I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like social media has made people so freaking weird. And I just think that's odd. Like, if I see you and I know you and I see you across my timeline, it's nothing to follow people. And I think people are also weird about their ratios. What like, you mean? Like they're like oh, like the ratio of people that they following compared to the people that's following them. Yes, like people. Like, I do think that that's a little. 
I don't know. I, I I will say though, I do think it's weird though when people be following like way more people than who follow them. Well, no, now that's weird. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like if you if you're like on if Twitter, you got 500 followers and you following 7,000 people. Yeah, that's weird. I'm not gonna lie. That's weird. <laughs> but I be seeing some people accounts. Like I used to know this dude. He was like, I'm not following over 99 people because he wanted it to be like. Under a hundred people, like so. Why? I don't know. Did you ever ask him though? Why? I don't. And it's not like he was somebody like known. Like he didn't. Like he got money and stuff. Like he a cool dude. You know who I'm talking about? Who? You remember him? How y'all, how y'all gonna do y'all listeners like that? I'm sorry. Just we always out. do that. At this that. point, we done did them like that every week for the past month. <laughs> yeah, they used to it. Up. He's that a part of the up. show now. But no, the only reason I didn't say his name because he doesn't, he's like not in this industry at all. He wouldn't want his name out there like that. Like, you know, but you remember him. Like, we went on mm-hmm. a, we, a double date. It was like a little double well, date. it was really like a, who? You wasn't on no date with him. No, nobody. I wasn't. I mean, his friend was there. He was but, a little odd. Yeah, it was a little weird. But anyways, <laughs> but yeah, that's how he was. He was like, I'm not following over 99 people. But I also think it's weird when people only follow, like, you know, they want to keep it under, like, 200 followers mm-hmm. and this and that. So they'll literally unfollow people they're following because they want to follow, they rather follow this person. So they'll unfollow that person. I don't know. I just think it's weird. I think it's weird, too. I feel like it really shouldn't matter. It really shouldn't matter. I feel like, I don't know, social media has, is really, really changing people. You know what I'm saying? Like, And, and I don't like it. Yeah, it's not for the better. Like, don't get me wrong. I love social media for what it is. We wouldn't even have a platform if it wasn't for social media. Yeah. You know, I do love social media for what it is and what we can use it for. But I just hate how people, like I said, I think it just makes people feel more important <laughs> than what they are. It makes people feel like they're celebrities when they're not. It makes people just feel, like, entitled to weird shit. Like yeah, I hate when I meet people and they they be like, oh, what's your Instagram? And then I give them my Instagram and they be like, oh, you popping? You probably ain't gonna follow me back. I'm not gonna follow you back, <laughs> but that's not why. <laughs> I feel awkward when somebody <laughs> follows me in their face and they're like, oh, follow back, and I'm just like, oh. yeah. And they try to make you feel better. Oh, you probably not go. I'm not gonna follow your ass back. Or I'm gonna unfollow- shit to do with the I'm fact not gonna that lie. I got two hundred thousand followers. I'm not gonna lie. I do be like following people if I meet them, but I go home and I unfollow. <laughs> Mm. But Ooh. no, but honestly, sometimes I. But when I go to your page, if you just have content that I don't like, I like food. I like looking at food. I like look, looking at vacations, and I like looking at bad bitches. That's what I like on my Instagram. Mm. Like that's what I want: food, vacations, bad bitches, and, and I the like BDBs. and the BDBs. I like to look at like hair stuff and nail stuff. But uh-huh. it's like if you're one of the people who just post a bunch of memes all day, I see the same memes. Like I, I know what you're like. I and just, I hate that's people who post food on a social media, but it be food that don't even look good. Yeah, I don't like that either. Like, why are you posting that on your page? Post that on your story, girl. The, the girls be wild. I don't post it at all, actually. Yeah, but yeah, like I was saying, I just feel like social media is just really changing people, and I just I don't like it. I don't like the direction it's going. I feel like people aren't real anymore and you know what that's one thing I will say like a lot of times when people come up to me and meet me they're like oh my god you're so sweet you're so nice blah 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 I'm like or some girl had tweeted me the other day she was like oh my god I love poor minds Dre and Lex are so funny and I tweeted her back I was like oh thank you girl she was like oh my god I can't believe you responded I'm like but that's how people act you know what I'm saying? She probably, because yeah. she's probably tweeted somebody from a podcast or tweeted somebody that was kind of known before. And, and they, they didn't respond. And they either ignored her, or maybe were rude to her. But it's like, it's literally free to be nice to people. Like, it especially is. people that are supporting you. Like, I love, I tell y'all this all the time. Any listeners of the show, anybody that follows me, if you ever see me out, please come and speak to me. Like, I say that they so do, much. They do, you they always come they and always, speak to you. Like, Didn't you say somebody spoke to you again? This yeah, season? somebody, I met somebody Um, when I was at uh, Sweet Lounge. She was like, Big Mama. I said, in the flesh, <laughs> nigga. In the flesh, nigga. Like, for real. I love, like, I love meeting people who, like, support me. Like, for real. He was like, Big Mama. I was like, what's up? <laughs> nigga, be happy as Did mom. you get a peek? Did you I, I did, and I actually retweeted it on my timeline on Twitter. What was the caption? What did he use? I tweet. I oh. actually was like, oh, let me see your phone, because mm-hmm. I was so drunk. I was like, I want to remember to follow you back. Mm-hmm. So I was like, hey, Lex, it's me. Follow mm-hmm. me back. <laughs> like, it's myself. Ran into my I sister did. at the club You are so night. annoying. Ran into my sister at the club. <laughs> <laughs> she said she fought with the movement. I <laughs> 
Keep up with the movement. Keep up with the movement. We working. <laughs> we, we working. We grinding. Me and Lexi, we out here working. Hey, hey, we working. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I always make it a point to be extra friendly because you never know who you're meeting or who they're connected to. Yeah. You never know who's listening to your show or who might be a supporter of you. So it's like, it just takes one moment for one person to meet you and they have the worst impression of you. And they're going around being like, People, a million people can be like, oh, I love Lex. She cool. She nice. She cool as fuck. But then there's that one person that's like, well, I met her. I had a bad time. And then their friends might be like, well, my friend don't like her because when she met her, you know, it just takes one bad seed to kind of plant bad things in people's head. Yeah. So I feel like, especially if I'm out in public, this is what, this is what I want to do. Like, and I, you can't, you just can't be mean to people. And I feel like acting like you're above somebody or I'm not going to follow you back or yeah. act like I don't know you. I'm like, what, what do people gain from that? I just don't get it. I don't know what they gain from it either. I think it's really odd because I just feel like if you know people, I've always said that though, like the whole time that like, I guess Instagram has been relevant and stuff. Like mm. if I know you in real life, I have no issue following you. No. Like what's the what's the problem? Who cares? Who cares if the person don't have as many followers as you mm-hmm. or if they don't post that often? It's just common courtesy. If somebody right. following you and you know them in person, why would you not follow them back? Right. Like I said, social media has created a bunch of monsters. Now I don't think that you should follow everybody necessarily. Now, okay, now I'm not gonna lie. Now I mean then you're gonna be following a lot yeah. of people and have a whole bunch of bullshit on your timeline. I'm not going to lie. For a minute, like, I was following, like, on Instagram, like, 1,200 people. And then I was like, oh, let me go through and, like, just clean out my thing. So I, like, unfollowed a lot of people. And I think I got it down to, like, 900. Because I'm like, some of these people I don't interact with. Because, you know, Instagram has a feature now. So you can look who you're, like, least interacted with. Mm-hmm. So when I went down that list, I'm like, I don't even know some of these people. Like, it was probably people, like, I met in the club, just mm-hmm. being drunk and being friendly and stuff. So... And it's like on my timeline, I'm just like scrolling. I'm like, who the fuck is this? Who the fuck is that? Who I the fuck used to is follow this? a lot of people too. I used to follow like two thousand something people. Now I follow like seven hundred and something. Yeah, I had to go clean this shit out. But too. also, I feel like you know I'm on social media so much, and I also like to monitor what I'm looking at every day. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're looking at a bunch of bullshit all day and a bunch of crazy ass stuff, that's like, it definitely will fuck with your psyche a little bit. Cause I know like last year, um, I don't know, I was just in a really bad funk. And I think, I remember we had this conversation. I was just like, damn, I'm just looking at everybody and everybody's doing this and doing that. And I feel like I'm not mm-hmm. doing anything. And Dre was like, well, bitch, you need to get off social media because you got to realize a lot of people on social media be cap as fuck. Half their asses ain't even doing that shit for Right, real. right. So I just got in a real bad funk with myself because I'm like, damn, this girl look like this, her waist, this small, her ass, this fat, she in the fucking Maldives and this bitch got on white. Face tone is a this. motherfucker. And look, I, I learned. <laughs> I learned. Lord. I, my big mama learned. I learned real then fucking you be quick. Bitches in person and that shit be cap. Cap as fuck. Mm-hmm. I be actually shocked. Yeah. One thing I will say, I've never hit the fact. But we all use Facetune. I don't use Facetune to use, do a little, you know, dip, nip, little tuck here and there. But at the I end mean, of the day, sometimes you just don't get your right angle. You don't get your right angle. But I've never used it to where it's like I don't look like. That. I don't look the same in person. I don't look right? the same in person. Like I literally mm-hmm. look exactly like. My I post videos all the time. Though. Yeah, me too. I post because y'all need to know it's all there. Can't Photoshop that pool. Period. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So yeah, I just I don't know. I feel like people need to be more so okay with being themselves on social media. I feel like I've done I've opened up a lot on social media now. Mm-hmm. I feel like I always had to post certain type of pictures. I never wanted to post clips. This is something crazy. I never wanted to post clips from poor minds on my page because I felt like people thought I looked a certain way and I, I couldn't have this personality. You know what I mean? But now I'm just like, fuck it. This is how I look and this is how I act. You know what I I'm like saying? I posting our clips. Well, I just, you they know. funny. Poor minds is a lot. Remember the first episode we recorded with Moran? Moran was like, he was. He was over there I mean, shoot. that was my first time. I didn't know what I was walking into. <laughs> he was you know taken aback. So I feel like a lot of people have been following me for a long time. They don't know me for poor minds. They just know Lex P on the gram. Mm-hmm. So it was like, how can I cross these two worlds together? But now I'm just like, look, this is what I do, and this is my personality. Like, this is who I am. Like, the people who listen to poor minds, they know Lex. Like, this is who I am. People that just really follow me on Instagram and don't really listen to the podcast or don't follow me on Twitter, honey, you've got a big storm coming because mm-hmm. – that's not that's really not who I am. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's weird when people try to judge you off of your social media anyways. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Especially like girls who only post pictures and yeah. only post videos and they don't really talk in their videos and stuff. How can you try to make an assumption about how this person personality is gonna be when they 
never say anything. Right. And that's mm-hmm. what I really wanted to steer away from. I was like, I want to. I feel like people, a lot of people did that to us. Yeah. Because I wasn't. we started the show. Yeah. Because, like, well, I wasn't talking about shit. I wasn't posting, doing shit, but posting my ass all the time. No, you know but you posted more. I feel like you could give, you could, you still could get more of a feel for your personality even before we started the podcast because you will always be on Twitter. Yeah. No, nah, like, Twitter I didn't be even tweet yeah. or anything. I definitely so be I feel like people were definitely kind of a little shy. But I will say this, though. With Twitter, though, I see a lot of people who have the funniest tweets, and then I meet them in person, and they be silent and mm-hmm. awkward and weird. Because Twitter is a little different. On, like, on here, this is, like, improv kind of. So it's mm-hmm. like when we say funny shit, it's really just off the dome. Right. But on Twitter. You better be coming off the dome with it. You know it. <laughs> there is no script here. There is no script there is here. There is no script. Yeah, I feel, but I always say that, too. I feel like some people are just. Like funny when it's premeditated. Yeah, like they have to on sit Twitter, there yes. and think of what they gonna say. And, I, and to me, it's even easier to be funny that way because you can literally sit there yeah. and then when you finally come up with a funny tweet or finally come up with something funny, you can tweet it and then you know it's probably gonna go viral. Right. But when you have to come up with stuff off the top of your head and just say shit on the spot, it is it's, a little, it's more, a little harder. It's a little more because I know sometimes I've sat there and I've constructed a tweet and I'm like, I know this shit about to be funny and Same. I know it's gonna go viral. Yeah. But sometimes I have my moments like my little friend Hammond tweet. He wasn't ready. I was on his ass. I was on his ass, sis. And then and I went and me. on his profile picture, and I was like, damn. He do look like he Fred, Fred, Hammond. Like Fred Hammond. He do look like Fred Hammond. But it's like sometimes you do have your moments on Twitter where you just be kind of witty and you bounce back mm-hmm. and you do stuff like that. But on Twitter, you can really sit there and construct a tweet and make it funny. But like shit like this. You know, like even with Instagram, it ain't for everybody. It's like it's it's not for everybody. But I I said I did want to show my personality more on my page because, like I said, this is who I am, and I cannot change who I am. Like I think I've talked about that before. Like I was in a relationship in the past, and he was always telling me I needed to tone it down. I need to be quiet. Nobody's gonna like me. Nobody wants a girl outspoken that's always talking about you sucking. You need to dick. be seen and not heard. You need to be seen and not heard. Yeah, but I'm just like I and I tried. I really did, y'all. As stupid as that sounds. I I was trying to change who I was for this man and I cannot help it. I'm going to talk about sucking dick because I like to suck dick. I'm going to talk about eating ass because that's what I do too. I <laughs> we know. <laughs> I really, we, didn't, we didn't really need a reminder. But I was, in case y'all forgot. I eat ass, y'all. I eat ass, y'all. I eat ass, y'all. I didn't say it on this episode today yet, so I had a, a daily reminder. I did, yeah. Moran, sidebar too, the girls are so ready to see you. They mm. keep asking. Mm. Y'all gonna have to wait to the live man. show. And I keep telling them, it's Wizard Kelly, y'all. Hey, it's Wizard Kelly, hey, y'all. Hey, shout out to and the girl, because Moran is cute. He is. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. Moran is very fine, y'all. Now, why you do that? Because now they really about to be over there like I mean, he is. I'm not. Moran got some nice lashes. He looks he he look like he got some number 66 on, y'all. He got some long hair. Hey, long man. hair, girl. Hey. Edge is all there. Ladies, I'm just throwing this out there right now because I get asked, like, every single day. No, I don't have my eyeliner. It's all I, it do look like it though. <laughs> I know. It Just does. It no, you do have some luscious, luxurious uh, lashes. Man. I was like, who did your lashes, Marie? Hey man, blame God and my mama. Hey man, he got the little sideburns. He do. He got more sideburns than you. <laughs> you got hey. some competition, <laughs> Drea. Yeah, Marie got better baby hair than me. He do. He really do. Marie is here to fuck the girls up. <laughs> hey man. Chilling, man. Okay. I'm with my sisters, man. I am dead. So I wanted to talk about this because there was something that happened this weekend with some unknowns on Twitter with a flyout story. Ooh. So I feel like we needed to revisit Not so this. Unknown. Girl, you know, everybody wanna everybody be chasing clout. Mm. Oh, do. It's 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 literally sickening. So I just wanted to revisit this topic. I wanted to talk about rules to a flyout. Like there's rules to a flyout. Obviously, you know what I'm saying? So I just wanted us to go through, like, the things that we, because, you know, we flewed out mommies. We done been flown out, like, over 20 times at this, at this so point. 20? 20, yeah. 50. That's count. Like, <laughs> 100. I know. I'm like, I'm really trying to think. I'm like going to Japan wait, next week, y'all. more credit than that. 20. Well, I'm just trying to think. Like, it's been a long, I mean, I'm trying, I've been 18. <laughs> For tw- I was, since I've been, I mean, I'm 30, so what, 12 years I've been getting flued out? Like, that's a long time. That's a long ass You've time. You've been getting flued out for a minute. I've been getting flued out for a minute. A minute, bro. Like, the first time I was on a PJ, I was what, 19, 20? Wow. Cutting up. Congratulations. Cutting up. I ain't been on a PJ since then, though, so let me I stop. Mean, it's saying. still a PJ. <laughs> like, it's everybody. There are people we know who are celebrities I've never done that. Yeah, but, okay, okay, but I wanted to talk about rules of a flyout because I'm just tired of seeing the girls going through hell on a flyout. 
I'm just tired of seeing it. It's not. Are you? I thoroughly enjoy it. Why? No, you're not playing. You no, are not really fucking playing. playing. Okay, so. Why would I enjoy that? It be funny sometimes, though. I ain't gonna lie. See, Like, see? when Future did that shit to that girl, that was kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, that was funny. I didn't even that lie. That was, was funny. funny as fuck. It just be crazy to me that some girls go on flyouts and they be, like, sitting in these niggas' houses hungry. No, Yeah, like, I seen that before. Like, okay, so Mandy had wrote a book a long time ago, uh, Mandy from Horrible Decisions, and it was basically, like, I can't remember what the name of the book was right now on the top of the dome, but it was basically like uh, talking about women who dealt with athletes and their flyout stories and shit. And there was one story I will just never forget. Like the girl was just sitting in this nigga house hungry as fuck. He came back from practice and had Chipotle and didn't bring her any. Mm-mm. And she had been in the house all day and hadn't ate shit. So I just want to really, first of all, let me say this, ladies. Y'all have to fuck with men who like you. I say this every week. You're not going to have no problems right. if you fuck with a person that likes you. If a nigga don't like you and he don't care about you, your fly experience is going to be terrible. You can tell if a person likes you or not. Stop being delusional. Stop lying to yourself. We're not doing that anymore. So the first rule to a fly out is make sure he fucking likes you. Please. Like. That's number one. That's number one. Make sure he likes you. I think you. girls be just assuming that dudes like them because they be trying to fly them out. That's not true. Because they let me tell you something. If a dude has a lot of money... Flights are not expensive, flights, especially now with the corona. Mm. Them hoes, $3. Mm. I can pay for my own flight That's now. That's what I was about to say. I got $4 today. You can go on tour. I'm going on tour. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing is when a guy gets your flight, make sure he gets you a round trip. Do not let a guy book you in one way. We have, I don't know how many times I have to say this. You will get stuck, or he's not. If he, if you don't fuck, he's not going to send you home. My rule of thumb has always been: if I cannot afford to get back home, I'm not going. Well, let me not lie to you, because there was no way I was getting back home from Dubai. <laughs> I had three dollars. No way I was getting back home. But you really had three dollars. <laughs> not literally, but I had three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> this all the time. At first, I thought it was a joke. Yeah, now I'm serious. starting to believe it. She's serious, oh, man. Let me see. Now I'm starting so to believe it. So how severe did you get your back beat down in Dubai? How I gotta, severe was it? I got that. Oh, hold on, wait. <laughs> I do got enough. Ooh, she get a McDouble with that. Damn, y'all. She really do. Oh. Oh, never mind. Oh, a 20. Oh, I'm good enough. <laughs> let me put it behind my back. You doubled up. You don't try to rob me. Droopled. You know, niggas, these niggas praying for my downfall. That's probably that twenty dollars I gave you. <laughs> I gave mine a grand. Hey, Don't do me. <laughs> no, but anyways, okay. So back to back to the topic. So no, I can't necessarily agree with that because, like I said, if I would have got stuck in Dubai, bitch, I was about to be calling Dre so she can call her man so he can send me home, bitch. But no, I'll say this: we would have got you back, big mama. Wait, y'all would have got me back. But I will say this: I know before I went on this trip that this man really fucked with me, and he was so excited to like turn up with me and have a good time. And when we went there, we had an amazing time as well. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I, but like I said, I wasn't about to let him get me a one way, you know what I'm saying? And be stuck out there. Either way it goes, like sometimes you might meet up with somebody and it don't be who you are, but at least you got your flight back home. So you can maybe get you a little hotel room or maybe just go sit in the airport until your flight be ready to go. You know what I'm saying? But always make sure he gets a round trip flight. And another thing I have to kind of add on to that one don't book your own flight. Why are y'all oh, booking your own? The peasant jumped out. Why you not book your own flight? Why would why would you book your own flight? Why? Why? You're basically paying. If a nigga wants you to come see him, why the fuck why would the you fuck? book your own flight? What kind of sense does that make? I don't get it. If I want to see him that bad, I'm going to make him happy. No, I don't want to see no nigga that bad. No, mm-hmm. I don't either. I do not. It ain't not one nigga walking God's green earth that I want to see that bad that I'm going to book my own motherfucking flight. Not one. To go see him. Not one. So, yeah, I feel like, ladies, if he's trying to press you to get your own flight, that's what happened to me. I was, like, kind of texting this little dude. He was like, oh, I want you to come see me. He was like, I'm going to take care of everything, you know. We're going to go eat. You can stay with me, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, cool. You need my date of birth and shit? My info. He was like, yeah, just get your flight. Get your flight. 
Nigga, please. I, I ain't never talked to that nigga ever again. <laughs> I ain't never talked to him. Cause I mean, maybe it was a test. Be- maybe he was trying to see if you would fly out, and he probably you probably was on your way to something lavish. No. It could have been a test. No. Well, I failed. A test for what? A flight, a flight. To, it was, And then mm-hmm. it was in L.A. I don't think so. Niggas who really be trying to do lavish shit just going to book your flight. Because they right. want you there, Neil. Neil. I don't get. I, don't, I ain't trying to do all that shit. I don't want no tests. I don't need to be fucking tested because I'm gonna fail every time. What a bag right. at. Right. You failed my test, nigga. All right. I'm just <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't need to fucking pass no motherfucking test. Because I'm gonna fail I, miserably. I already got three dollars, and you want me to book my own flight, and you want some Garfield? Oh hell no. I'm just saying, man, it could have been. Getting picked up in a Lamborghini. So, I mean, ju- so judging from what you're saying, you probably would do that. I mean, yeah, I ain't gonna cap. I probably would do something like that, like just, just to see if she was real. Cause nah, man, you can't. How they make you real? Because they make you, you can't real give. You dumb? If you're somebody I like, you can't give everybody everything so soon. I mean, true, but I'm I... just saying. Like, imagine you pay for your flight and that's it. I pay for your way back. You ain't got nothing else to worry about while you're here. Just think about it. You gonna buy me a bag? Maybe. <laughs> think about it. Think about the situation. But my thing is, if you're going to buy me but a what bag. what if you don't? So what if you no, go no, no, no. and then he don't? But this is my thing. Get you nothing. You, and be taking you to Applebee's. Even, it's not even about that. <laughs> I wouldn't be like that. I wouldn't <laughs> it's not okay, even about I'm that for saying. me. I just feel like, now I'm not going to lie. I did have the money at the time because, like I said, it was only a flight to L.A. It's not that big of a deal. I did have the money. But at the end of the day, it was only like a three, $400 flight. Just get it. Just get it. I like to be courted. Mm-hmm. I had a nigga sit. My Nigerian baby, we was at the dinner table, bitch. And he was like, I want you to come to Legos with me. I said, baby, I want to come too. And he bought a damn near $3,000 ticket before the bill even came out at the dinner table. So that's the type of shit I would flex on. That's the that type of shit yeah, I'm yeah, on. Flexing. She flexing real hard. She flexing like, real hard. You know, the dudes who listening, you just hurt their feelings. Got well, it, you know, but that's the type. That. But you Better have to now. realize, that's, the type, that's the type of energy that niggas that I have fuck with. Mm. You gotta be a cold ass nigga to come pry my, me Not out of a cold ass to nigga. pry me out of Nigerian Bay hands. I, mean, I ain't going nowhere. That's my man. Well, you almost got pried out of his hands last I did. week. I did. So that's cap. Yep. I'm just dead. And I was. I would have been so mad. Wait, I but I'll say this about this that nigga. situation. You know, Moran say he fuck with Nigerian. I fuck with Nigerian. Bay. No, I, I do too. Him. But like. You know, if you go out and hang out, like, that was more of, like, a hangout. Like, we was going out, turning <laughs> up, and having a good time. But, <laughs> you know what? This is not what Did the nigga smash? <gasps> no! Did the nigga smash? <laughs> no, he did. Did the nigga smash? He did not smash. <laughs> he did not smash. But, like, y'all can tell I've been on. He was smashing to smithereens. Bitch, I'm dead. I just feel like, like I said, we getting, we getting off topic. We talking about Garfield. <laughs> I'm starting to sweat, bitches. <laughs> Goddamn. But no, I like I said, I feel like my standards are a certain, like I feel like paying for my own fly out, that's dead. Never. Like that's Have some, you ever paid for your own flight before? I have paid for my own flight before, but but Damn. this is what no. It was worth it though, wasn't it? No, no, no. It, I mean, it was a fun, but let me tell you why though. I was already I was already going out there with some friends, mm. and so it ended up being like, oh, I ended up like staying with him while I was out there. So it was kind of fly, but it kind of wasn't. But I was already headed out there anyway. Mm-hmm. If that kind of makes sense, it don't. But wow. I mean, <laughs> I mean, but you know, you live and you learn. You live and you learn. But okay, so that's another rule. Another rule to fly out. This is for the men. When you fly a bitch out, and y'all staying in the same hotel room. Please, please, in the morning, if you could just leave for like an hour so we can do what we got to do. Because we just be having a shit. I got a shit. <laughs> I need to get my hair together. That's a good rule. Leave in the morning for just like an hour. Like in the morning, just go downstairs, have you some breakfast. Go, go do some yoga. Talk to your niggas on the phone. Just leave us in the room for like an hour so we can get our shit together. When I tell y'all, when I went to Paris, you it was, boo-boo. oh, I had a boo-boo so bad, y'all. And I was like sweating. He was like, well, what you want to do today? And nigga, I want to shit. <laughs> Why didn't you do it? Did You, you did Because he was there. He was there in the room. So I had to act like my friend. I was like telling my friend, I was like, girl, call me. And I was like, ooh, I got to take this phone call, boo. I'll be right back. I was going to the lobby and blowing mm-hmm. it up, bitch. I was fucking I that lobby think, up every morning. I definitely think you have to know. Like, I feel like you need to know a nigga for a certain period of time before you just. You know, I don't care. But you let know, one go. I've had this conversation with Dre. Room. I don't even care. I've been dating people for years. Like, I just don't do that in front of my men. I don't fart. I don't shit. I don't do none of that in front of my nigga. I just oh. can't. There was a debate on, I think, Instagram the other day. Like, is it okay for your significant other to take a shit in front of you? I think that it's, like, I don't mind if my man does it. I don't care if he farts in front of me or any of that. But I don't like to do, I just, I can't. 
I can't. Man, I be, I don't know. Niggas I be fucking with, they be so comfortable around me. I mean, I be super comfortable. Like They be shitting around me like the first. I'm dead. On the first encounter. Yeah, like, I mean, I've had. But I think that's just men. That's just a male yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a male thing. Like, Because I a, could never, like, never. meet a guy and then the first time I go to his house. Shit up in his house. Oh my god! Or fart. Mm. I'm like when I flew out with football bag, I was so happy. Like he had to leave early in the morning. I was like, oh thank god. But I told you my trick for when you got to fart. What? When you in the bed. What? I already told you. Tell it. You gotta like lift your booty cheek. And that do just... not work. Yes, One of do. our listeners said they tried it. So on well, a past, her, obviously we said we agree, we both agreed that her booty cheeks was probably malfunctioning. <laughs> So Drea uh, said, uh, Drea said, if you have to fart, you need to lift up your cheek and just let it slide out your booty hole, and it won't make like a sound. This. It's your <laughs> cheeks. It's your cheeks that make your. It's when, okay, so when you fart, it's your cheeks that make it go. <laughs> and how do you know this? <laughs> Research, trial and error. Uh, how do you know that? That don't. That don't make no sense, bro. <laughs> that don't make no sense. Really? It don't. <laughs> that don't no, make it's no the sense. booty hole that makes that noise. No, it's yes, not. Yes, wash my lips. That was a noise, right? That was a booty hole. <laughs> I'm telling you. What you made your lips so Because this is how booty hole. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, seriously. I think it's your cheeks that make it like It's that. not. Okay, well, why, well, how come when I do it, it just slide out? Because that booty hole loose. <laughs> What the thing about this conversation? There's some dude listening to this getting turned on right now. <laughs> this shit about to turn some dude on. Y'all about to get some crazy ass DM. Fart in my face. Well, you hey. know, Lex be running into them type of niggas. Exactly. He probably Hootie listening. Tang. He probably listening right now. I knew she was ready. Yep. He probably excited. Pootie himself. Tang is disgusting. Pootie Tang hit me up the other day. Said I want some. Again? Yes. He you was... said this last week. He oh again? no, that was probably what I was talking about. Yeah, but that was the last time he did hit me up, and I'm just like Pootie Tang, please. Please, I need him to stop. Well, but I just feel like if you if you do got to fart in bed, that's the courteous thing to do. I feel it's like, like if you have you to know, fart, just anytime I have to do out. anything, I, I fake a phone call and I leave the room. Mm-hmm. I, I just can't. Because sometimes... Faking a phone call is life. I love to fake a good phone yeah. call. But I feel like men, like, you know, I'm telling y'all right now, if you fly a girl out... Leave her in peace in the morning. Now, it's good if you go to a nigga house and he got a big house. Because my ex used to have the big house, so I would just go upstairs. He had a three-story <clears throat> townhouse. So I would just go on another floor. Oh, no, I did. You used to do off. that. Yeah, Absolutely. you could sneak off to another floor. Yes, yeah, so when a nigga go got another... a big-ass house, you could definitely sneak off and go to one of the other bedrooms. Yeah, rooms. for sure, for They'd sure. They'd be like, where you was at? Oh, you know. I just had a fresh I did some laundry. I'm dead. Yeah, so... That's another rule. Um, <clears throat> another thing uh, that's important on a fly out, especially if y'all haven't really met before or haven't really hung out, when you go on a fly out, ladies, you need to be looking 100% good. Mm-hmm. Like, before you go on a fly out, get your nails done, your hair done, your toe done. Everything needs to be fresh. You want to be like, y'all are hanging out for multiple days at this point. You know what I'm saying? So you need to show the nigga what you about. Men love a woman that looks good and looks polished. Yeah, they do. Like, when you go on a fly out, don't be like, oh, well, I'ma just, you know, this is us spending time together, so I'ma show him so we can be comfortable. No, this is not the time to be comfortable, But bitch. I also feel like some girls be going on fly outs looking any type of way because they be hoping that the nigga gonna pay for it. No. Like, hoping that they gonna pay to get their nails done. Nope. Well, I'll say this. Before I went to Dubai, I let him know, hey, I need to get ready for the trip. So he sent me some money beforehand to get ready. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it, but you need to go out there ready to go. Like, nothing. Like, you need to be, like I said, hair needs to be laid, feet done, nails done, everything. So I feel like that's a thing for the ladies. Like, I feel like a lot of times ladies always, especially the listeners, be like, oh, how do I pull a BDB? How do I pull it? You have to look the part, sis. Mm. I'm dead, Drea. What? You I have was to, trying to set up the, the video. So yeah, I feel like you have. That's a, a, a important thing about pulling a certain type of man. You gotta look the part. Like you have to look good. Yeah. Like you gotta be. Well, late. you don't even pull a BDB if you don't look good. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you don't have to be the baddest bitch. Yeah, of course not. But I'm talking about as far as just like how you are groomed. Right. Like, like you have to. You still have to be put well put together. Right. Exactly. I feel like certain type of men don't want no woman who is not well put together. And right. Not you have to be the baddest bitch walking. Like, right. Right. Know? I feel like you have to have that polished look, hair done, nails done, feet done, like everything needs to be done. Like, mm-hmm. so that's another rule of fly. You have any? You have any more rules? 
Oh, and like you were saying real quick, so because you were saying I feel like um, you covered everything. Well, another thing, because you said uh, a lot of girls feel like um, when they do a fly out, a guy maybe they won't want to look too good because a guy's not one gonna, gonna take them shopping or whatever. But I feel like if you want to go shopping, just say that. I feel like a lot of times guys will be like, okay, what you want to do today? I want to go to the mall. That's not a big deal. I mean, like, that's the only way you're going to end up That's the only there. way you're going to end up at the mall. So I feel like a lot of times girls be like, oh, I want this, I want that. Next time he asks you what you want to do, be like, I want to go to the mall. Bitch, so y'all can go shopping. And, and be specific. Can... Yeah. You don't want to go to Steve Madden. You would like to go to Sex. Period. Because Sex got everything in there. Sex is like a one-stop shop. Sex do have everything. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I mean, because I remember I went to Miami with this nigga some years ago, and... I told him I had need to get my feet done because mm-hmm. he was just pressing me to come to Miami. So I'm like, okay, I'll come, but I need to get my feet done. I was like, so when I get there, you either going to have to take me to the nail shop or you're going to have to buy me some clothes, so shoes. Mm-hmm. So he was like, all right. So when I get there, he told me why we can go to the nail shop. We ended up not going. So I'm like, okay, you got to buy me some shoes. We go to Ball Harbor. This nigga going to try to take me to Steve Madden. I was <gasps> like... You think we about to go to Steve Madden? Why are y'all talking like y'all going to the emergency room or some <laughs> shit? Like, like, like that gasp? Like, damn. Is I it, was shook. Is it really that bad? Yes. Serious question. Serious question. It was. Yeah, well, it is. It, Let me tell you why, Moran, well, because this man was a millionaire. Okay. How dare you? No, he wasn't. He wasn't? No. Well, he got six this figures. Is- <laughs> How oh dare you? Man, was, this was the African dude that I was talking to when I first moved here, remember? So he got six figures. He, he was a scammer. So that's another thing, oh, wow. too. It's like he had he could buy me whatever the fuck You're I You're not wanted. buying yourself, Steve, man. And then he had already, like, he had pressed me to take off work. He had gave me money for taking off work. So it's like, nigga, I know you got it. You taking me to all these nice-ass restaurants and shit. Do you think you about to pull up at Steve Madden? I don't think so. Valentino me, please. I'm dead. Okay, all right. Moran said that gas. I mean, that was a very <laughs> I was, deep gas. I was shook. Damn. Cause I, and I that's just, what I got, too, because he had me fucked up. I was like, I don't want that. I was like, I want to go to sex. It's a little offensive, okay. though. It's it was a little, very offensive. I think it's offensive. offensive? Yeah. He gave Moran. you money even before he bought you shit. He also begged me to come on a truck. That's the offense. Like, and you went. Right, so okay. I need what I want. But she also said that before, like, but I mean, <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny. funny. I could have stayed in Atlanta and worked. But you can look at Drea. Why would you look at Drea and be like, I can take her to Steve Madden? Why wouldn't he? That's Unless a you great say something. Question. Unless you say something, uh-huh. which you clearly did. Now, see me, I can understand. They can be like, oh, she'll be all uh, like, oh man. <laughs> I can only imagine how that man felt, bro. I'm gonna be sad as fuck. God damn. You can imagine how who felt him? Yes. Then on top of that, he was a swaggy ass nigga. Like he used to be having all that shit on. So you got me fucked up. You think you about to take me to dick? This goes back to what we was talking Mm. about last week. Mm. We just talked about these. Okay. You think you about to have on some motherfucking Louboutins and shit? And you think you about to take me to Steve Madden? Oh, you got the game all the way fucked up. Okay. I need my shoes. Period. Period. So Steve Madden doesn't have anything you like. Nothing. Yeah, like, but I could have bought that shit myself. Right. If you but you buy, weren't going I mean, to, I though. You could have bought the Louis Vuitton and all that by yourself. That's y'all true. working, y'all grinding, y'all getting it. That's, Why that's spend that's mine sexual. when I can spend right, yours? Right, exactly. I'll spend my money on some Steve Maddens, but I ain't spending them hoes on no Tom Ford. Why not? Because that shit expensive. And you got more money than me. <laughs> if, if I have, God. if I have enough money, oh my if God. I have enough money in my account to buy some fifteen hundred dollars shoes, even if I could buy them and still have a lot of money left over, but you also have money to buy them for me, why would I not let you buy them and keep my fifteen hundred dollars? I'm just tripping over the fact that my boy, you literally just sat up here and said he paid you not to go to work. Yeah, because he, he was flew, like begging me to come, and you went. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was trying to do something nice for you. Mm-hmm. Like damn, like y'all, y- y'all reacted like you got cancer or some shit. Like, well, damn. I was sure taking me to Steve Madden is not nice. <laughs> wow, that's. I, I mean, it's just it's just a simple fact. Like, I, we're not talking about Foot Locker. We're not talking about champs or some shit. Like, whatever. We're not talking about. Macy's. I'd rather some ones. Really? Then some motherfucking Steve Madden. So a yeah. man can really bring you some Air Force ones, and you'll be. No, happy. I didn't say Air Force ones. The black you, ones. You said one. <laughs> I'm talking <laughs> about the Jordan ones. Oh well. So, okay, so if somebody brought you some retro Jordan ones, you'll be happy. Yeah, because I like sneakers. Say that with a straight face. She do. Yeah. She do. So if, if a man brought you some Air Jordan ones, you would be happy. Yes, especially if they was the ones that just came out, like the new releases. Absolutely. 
I'll be cool with that. I probably would want like at least two other pairs of shoes. So, no. Okay, yeah. so she's gotta, gotta be a package. Uh, gotta be a package. So she want to define the moments package. <laughs> That's what she. I, okay, but hey, fellas, we just found out that Drell likes sneakers. All right. I do like sneakers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's an honest oh my question. God. Maria be acting like we don't like nothing that's cheap. Jordans ain't cheap. They are. I mean, I mean, they're, they're not. Affordable. They're, they're affordable. affordable. They're affordable. They're affordable for the average person. Yeah. Like the average person's not walking around in like Valentinos and stuff right. like that. So I guess that's what she means. Like they're not cheap. I feel like but Jordans are very affordable. Ooh, I'm, I, I'm not. I'm just tripping over the fact, like, in hindsight, when you really look at the situation, you really got everything you wanted. Yeah, I know. That's why I kept Bef- talking to him when I got you- back. I, I, <laughs> That's why I didn't cut him off. I, I did. I, A true king. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, those are our rules to the flyouts. Do you have any more rules to add to a flyout? Anything else that you feel like you need to add? No, I think you covered everything. Yeah. You did a great job. I'll just be trying to make sure the queens have the best fly out possible. And y'all, you know what I'm saying? We're trying to get y'all on the BDB. And don't let that nigga fly you on spirit. Yeah, don't. Don't yeah. fly on spirit. But honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. Now, this is something new I'm working on. This is what Killer told me. Killer taught me. Killer told me from now on when I fly out, because the type of men, you know, that I got in my life now, you know, they got a little bread. She was like, you need to be flying first class. Like, oh, yeah. you need to tell them. So... That's I gotta see. I'll let y'all know on my next flight if I'm on first class or not. But <laughs> that's what she told me. She was like, bitch, you need to be on first class. This economy shit, I'll be on the last one waiting, but I'll be happy as hell. <laughs> I'll be like, <laughs> they be like, group Z. You I'm like that's I mean, but this is the thing though. Like, whenever I think of flying out, I just automatically assume you're a first class. Let I just you automatically assume. I'll be in the bathroom. I'll be in the bathroom happy as fuck. <laughs> I hate that fucking seat by the bathroom. I remember one time, and I done went to Miami a lot of times with a lot of niggas, not that I'm thinking uh-huh. about it. I remember another time I went to Miami, this nigga gonna fly me there. He was already there. He gonna fly me there. Then on the way back, he was sitting in first class, and my fucking seat was way in the back by the bathroom. No, let me tell you. When I we, was mad as hell. Yeah, you know. that's what happened on the way back from Legos. Nigerian Bay was in the front, and he sent me to the back. <laughs> But he ended up coming, because I had the whole road to myself. See? So he ended up coming back and sitting with me. He did come to the back and sit with me in the back. Don't come sit with me, nigga. Why you didn't book my flight first class? That's too? what I said, girl. But like I Niggas said. Niggas be trying it. They do be trying it. They do be trying it. But like I said, I don't think, uh, that I, I, that's something I'm working on. Because I'm not going to lie. Flying out the country first class is very different. That shit is expensive mm-hmm. as fuck. You can easily have a $3,000 ticket go to a $10,000 ticket. And sometimes my view on it is why well, spend $10,000 on a ticket because I want you to use that money out there on me because I'd rather go shopping and something like, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I'm the type of person, I sleep on flights anyway. Right. I don't be awake. Like when I be on these long flights, I'm never awake. So mm-hmm. it doesn't really bother me not to be in first class because like I said, $10,000, I'd rather you just give me that money. That's fair. Or go shopping with it. Yeah, so facts. I don't just, really care about. I that. I've never I never really cared about it, but like like I said, my friend brought it to my attention. She was like, "Bitch, you need to be on first class." But maybe maybe I'll care more about it later. But for now, I don't care. You better be first class. I just mommy. be like I said. I just be happy to be there, bitch. I be like this last person walking on, <laughs> happy <laughs> as hell. Not boarding group Z. Boarding group Z, bitch, and I be right there, bitch. Okay, so now we gonna get into the bed. Debbie. Hey. Debbie. Hey. Debbie. So look, this is your topic. So I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you introduce it, Queen. I forgot what it was. I'm dead. Oh. Yeah, so this girl that I follow on Instagram, um, she was basically she had posted a post up on her page and it basically said, What's the dumbest thing that you ever did for a dick appointment? So I thought that would be a good topic to talk about today. Cause I done <sighs> did some dumb ass shit for some dick. Well Oh wow. I want to hear about I'm this. I'm dead. I don't. Well, mine isn't dumb. Mine is just mine ain't really. It's dumb quite neither, embarrassing. But it's just yeah. Mine is really embarrassing. Okay, like, you go first. Oh mine, I don't think mine is probably gonna be as embarrassing as yours though. Okay, so <clears throat> this was when I was fucking with uh, this basketball player. I was young. I was probably like 23, y'all. Okay, so let me just write my disclaimer. I can't believe I'm telling this story because I've never told this story to anybody. Because it was that bad. Well, for me. You've never told this story? I've never told this story. You never told me? No. Because I like to put <gasps> it in the back of my head and forget about it. Oh, my God. So, this is a guy that I, I was dealing with for, like, years. But at this point, we were kind of, like, at the end of our situation, whatever it was. And 
you know, whenever he would come to town, whenever he had games, he would always hit me up and we would always turn up and go out. Well, this time that he had came out, I guess, I don't know if he didn't want to take me out. I don't know what was going on, but we were just in a bad space. But, of course, every time he came to town, he hit me up, whatever. So he was in town. He was like, hey, I'm at the hotel. Just go to the front, get the key, and go to the room, whatever. So I'm like, okay, bitch, I'm about to set it up. I'm about to turn this nigga out. Like, I'm about to do, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? So. And how old was you? I was like 23. Okay. But I was like, I just knew, like, I didn't know how it was to fuck with a BDB at the time, but I knew I just needed to do something because I was trying to keep my nigga because I could feel myself losing him, you know? So I was like, okay, I'm going to really just set this shit out. So I had called my friend and we had went to, like, we had went to somewhere and got me some, like, little cheap lingerie, just something, you know, I could throw on, like, under. So I was like, okay. I'm doing all this. I was like, okay, I'm gonna order some champagne to the room. Like, I'm like getting ready for this shit. Like, I, I didn't, I didn't wax then, so I shaved little Garfield. Me and Garfield was shaved, bitch. Like, whole body. Like, I was just like dressing up to the T. Like, looking good. Went and got me a whole outfit for this. Cause I was like, whenever he comes to the room, I wanted, I was gonna be like waiting on the what bed. What kind of outfit lingerie. was he? Um, I just had like a little cute little dress, but we didn't end up going out, like I said, but I had my lingerie on under it. Mm -hmm. But he once he had called me, he was like, just meet me in the room. Mm -hmm. So, bitch, I get to the room and I'm like, you know what, fuck it. I ordered a little champagne to the room. I'm kind of drinking a little bit. I get a little tipsy. And I'm like, okay, let me get naked. I was like, no, let me keep my lingerie on. So I keep my lingerie on. I'm like sitting on the bed. I'm like, okay, so I know he's about to be here in like an hour or two. So I'm just chilling in the room, drinking, doing whatever. So I he calls me, but he hangs up really quick. And I'm like, okay. And I call him back, and he doesn't answer the phone. <laughs> oh, God, this is getting traumatizing. I'm so, scared for what's about to happen next. He sends me a text message. He was like, hey, you need to get out. Like, you need to go. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm tired. He was like, you need to go. Like, I'm tired. I'm When I get back to the room, I'm going to sleep type shit. But I know it's because, like, he probably met a girl and was bringing her back to the room, bitch. So I'm just, like, in this nigga bed, like, waiting. I'm like, oh, he probably just telling me he on the way. He was like, yeah, you need to go. Like, yeah. Oh, my God. When I tell y'all I was horrified and I was scarred for life, like. That is so embarrassing. That was, it was so, mm -hmm. I cried. I literally cried. Like. Wow. It was, now I can laugh at it now. I mean, because now it's like I don't care because it's just funny because l years later, of course, you know, he tried to come back yeah, and tried to fuck course. with me. Like, you know, they always come Her back. Use. But in that moment, because I liked him so much and I was really trying to work things out with him, and he was just like, yeah. He was like, yeah, you got to go. He was like, you're not at the room, are you? I was like, yeah, I'm here. I'm waiting on you. He was like, yeah, you got to go. Like, I'm kind of tired, so, and I got to get up early. And I was like, oh. Okay, I just... but that's not that's embarrassing. Like that's I embarrassing. Think that's more of like an ego type of embarrassing, though. At least it didn't happen in front of nobody. Yeah, you know? I guess so. But it was still embarrassing. Like, yeah. and I just feel like that was some dumbass shit. Like, I know now. Like, I'm not about to go to no nigga room and just like wait for you and be like trying to do something. These niggas don't deserve shit. So did you leave? Hell yeah, I left. What was I gonna do? Stay there? I would have. And what? So he can walk in with another bitch and I'm just looking there dumb. That's when it would have been embarrassing, really. Because I would have been embarrassed in front of them, too. Mm -mm, it would have been like that scene from the Biggie movie. I'm fucking dead. Mm. When Faith punched the shit out their hoes. Uh-uh. I'm not, mm -mm. I'm not punching I would have been mad. I was definitely mad. I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. I would have been mad as fuck. It was torture. It was torture. So, yeah, that was my dumb dick appointment with no dick story mm. what about you i went to jail <laughs> what is up with you went to jail for the d she did <laughs> she i went to jail about that d what happened i was like 19 oh i know this yeah, story yeah and i had a boyfriend i don't think i never told the listeners yeah though. but yeah and i had a boyfriend and i was going to school because i went to sfa in texas which is like two hours away from houston so i used to come home on the weekends and come see my boyfriend every weekend so I come home. He was staying with his sister in his sister apartment building. So like that's that particular night, usually we would just fuck like in his sister house when she would be at work. But that particular night, she was off and her kids was there and stuff. So we was like, oh, fuck it. We'll fuck in the car. Because it's not like that was the first time we ever fucked in the car. Mm -hmm. So we go park... Um, like in the little parking area that's right in front of the leasing office and we get in the back seat and we like fucking or whatever and I think I had on some jeans so I had to take my jeans off which mm. was dumb because I should have probably just wore a dress so mm. it would have been easy access but I took my jeans off and then so we fucking you know whatever all of a sudden I see this light 
like in the back seat. So I'm like, what the fuck? So he started knocking on the window. So then we look, it's this old ass white man who apparently was like the um the parking, I mean, not the parking, the apartment security or whatever. I'm dead. So he knocking on the door. And of course, like looking back on it, I made a lot of dumb decisions because when he was knocking on the door and telling us we had to come in the office and all of that stuff, I should have just zoomed off. Yeah. But I was like 19, so I was like scared as fuck, so I mm-hmm. thought I had to go with him. Mm-hmm. So we end up going inside. He writes us up. He tells me I can't come back on the premises anymore. And then he's like, oh yeah, and I called the police. I'm dead. So the police was on the way. So in that moment, I should have got my black ass up and left. Yeah. But we just sitting there. Me and his dumb ass just sitting there. I'm fucking Like, what dead. the fuck? So then the police pull up. And they like, yeah, we going to have to arrest y'all for public indecency. That is so embarrassing. So I had to leave my car there. So my car got towed. Mm-hmm. Then we went to jail. They tried to take my wig off. <gasps> Not okay, the wig! Tasha. <laughs> Tasha St. Patrick. I'm dead! <laughs> oh, wait, no. It was a sew-in. It wasn't a wig. It was a sew-in. But they yeah. were trying to see if they could take it off. I was like, hold on. Y'all can't take this off. I they had me dead. so fucked up. So anyway, so yeah, we both so and I, it felt like some Bonnie and Clyde. She like we rolled in the back seat together. Y- y'all was holding and hands, and I was crying. No, we wasn't holding hands, bitch. We was handcuffed. I'm dead. But I was crying <laughs> and shit. And he was like, "Baby, it's gonna be all right. It's yeah, gonna be yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. We gonna get out tomorrow." <laughs> you was in the trenches, girl. So I had to call my mama, and I'm like, "Mama, I'm in jail," and she like, "For what?" <laughs> <laughs> like what did you do? <laughs> and I'm like, fucking no. But see, okay, so this is the thing. Got my black so instead out. of the so instead of the whole ass officer just not taking us to jail at all, he's like, oh, I see you in school and I see you don't have no priors. Like you ain't never been in trouble before. So instead of giving you public indecency, we're gonna like lessen it to um public intoxication, mm. which I guess was like a class. C misdemeanor mm-hmm. instead of a class B. So I ended up having to tell my mom it was public intoxication so she didn't find out that I oh, was good. fucking in the car. But now she knows. Of course not. I done older. told her. But yeah, back then she didn't know. She was like, what the hell you was doing out there drunk as fuck? And I'm like, well shit, I'd rather you think I'm drunk than to yeah, think I was, I was doing fucking. what I was really doing. That's crazy. But yeah, that was probably like the most dumbest thing yeah. I ever did. For I definitely... That mine was embarrassing, but like I said, I I was actually fucking in the car and his girlfriend pulled up. Oh, you did tell yeah, me I about told that. You that. But she that's was not like, really embarrassing. That's not embarrassing, but let me, it was embarrassing on her part because she knocked on the window and she was like, "What are you doing?" We were like, "Oh, we just talking." My panties are clearly on the floor. She's like, seen I, them. I, I mean, the way like the it was like lit up. It's like all you had to do was like look down and you could see it. And then she left us there. She was like, uh, "Whatever," and she just left. I was like, "Okay," and we definitely finished. <gasps> So I don't know. What <laughs> child? I was. It was during my college days, so it That's was just a crazy. Mess. Yeah, that was like the most dumbest shit I ever did for some dick, and that was just some peasant shit. Cause that nigga didn't even give me my money back for getting my car out the toll. Oh, I no. mean, out the pound. I am dead. Mm. Do you what have, a peasant? Do you have an embarrassing story, Maria? You would like to share? I don't have nothing embarrassing, but I, I mean, so there was this one time. <laughs> I'm scared. Now it's, nah, it's not embarrassing. I'll say I probably just took a crazy risk, but I'll just say. Um, I was on my way back from somewhere, and mm-hmm. I just so happened to be passing this chick. I was like 18, like high school. Okay, 18, okay. 18. I just happened to be passing the house of this chick who I was smashing, mm-hmm. and she just asked me to come over. So she snuck me in her house, and I literally like smashed her like in a room right where her mom was sleeping next to it. So it next like, to, see, this room is like this room, and her mom is like right there. Sleeping. See, that's what <laughs> oh, thing. That's crazy. Something <laughs> like that happened to me before, too. It I was just, worth it, though, because that shit really I'm did dead. give me a rush. I ain't gonna lie, that shit gave me a rush. Like, oh shit, we might get caught. It ain't nothing <laughs> like shit, sneak dicking. That shit gave I me a rush. I just cannot I believe people would be having sex like when their mom is in the house. I had sex when my mama was in the house before. Yeah. I told oh you the police God. came that time too. I done had a few run-ins with the police trying to get some D. Wow. Uh, I can't do it. I cannot do it. <laughs> That's crazy. But no, nah, it was fun though. I would imagine the shit you're not supposed to be doing is always <laughs> fun. fun. I am fucking and exciting. Dead. Okay, so let us know. I would like to know y'all's embarrassing dick I stories. I want to know too. I, could y'all please send us some stories so we can just read them and laugh? Because I like to laugh. Because I'm mine was embarrassing. Y'all gonna be like, oh damn, somebody did legs dirty. Oh, Lord. It's just, happened to the best of I'll just, just share it, though. So, um, we all want to do the bop of the week right now? Yeah, let's um, do the bop of the week. Okay. Okay, so um, I'll go first because I know they're going to disagree with me and Ooh. talk shit. You already know. I actually um, I actually have two bops of the week. So, okay. my By first. By the same person? Mm-mm. 
Um, so my first bop of the week, I actually came across this girl because she's on Love and Hip Hop Miami, and somebody had tweeted like a scene from the show, and I was like, oh wait, this song actually sounds kind of good. And y'all know I love like fun twerking music, like that's what the type of stuff I be listening to. So her name is Chameleon, and she has a song called Womp Womp, and it's featuring I Am Zoe, the little funny guy on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like it's just like a cute little like twerking song, and I just it sounds so Miami. And one thing I love Miami twerking music, like they. Yes, yeah, like they be having like the horns and the band. You know, that's like that Miami mm-hmm. sound. So that's my first bop of the week. It's called Chameleon. It's by Chameleon. It's called Womp Womp. And of course, I Love Sugar by Meg Thee Stallion. I know y'all going to disagree with me right now, but mm-hmm. let me say this. Now, one, I do agree on this album. She doesn't have her quote unquote Bodak Yellow. Like she doesn't have her chart topping song on this album. But I will say the lyrics are fucking there. The lyrics are fire. Like, she has a lot. It's just a lot of songs I like on this album. I'll honestly say it's going to be easier for me to name the songs I don't like. The only three songs I don't really care for is Hit My Phone with Kalani, Stop Playing by Gunna, and Crying in the Car is okay. But everything else I fuck with. Like, my favorite is definitely, of course, Bitch is fire. Rich. Rich is bars. Like, bars. She got bars in there. The beat is fire. I mean, I told you, I would personally say that that's probably one of the only songs that I like Mm -hmm. off of the album. Savage is good. Rich and Savage and Bitch, but Bitch was already her single, so it's like three songs. What I need is fire, too. What I need. It's for her to have kept that album and waited a little longer no, to put it out. I That's think, what I needed. I like Sugar. I do like it. I feel like it was a good... It got some bops on there. Hashtag I'm with Carl. Oh. Ooh, if it ain't got nothing to do with you, stay out of it. <laughs> stay you know out what? We about it. to get sued. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. No, she not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think I, think I like Sh- Meg though. Honestly, no, if you I listen love to Meg. the show. Anybody that listens to the show, I mean, has been listening to the show, y'all know we love Meg. Yeah, Me we too. definitely love but Meg. But I don't honestly feel like that was like a good album. I like it. I can't agree and with that's y'all. Just me being but honest. let me tell y'all this. I know how I am. I have to let stuff ride. The first listen through, I was like, uh, I don't know. But it also took me a month to listen to Anti and really get into Anti by Rihanna. So sometimes I think people just need to let it ride. Like just really listen to it. Like you gotta let you gotta listen to an album a few times. I feel like everybody listened to it once and was just like, oh nope, it's bad. Let me throw it out. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It just came out. It's just one of them things that you gotta let ride. You gotta listen to it in the car. You gotta hear it in the club like listening to it on your phone you're not gonna get the full effects versus hearing it in your car Mm -hmm. or listening to it on your phone because when I first listened to like what I need for example I was like okay this is not it I don't like her singing but then I played it in the car I'm like oh shit this is actually kind of hard yeah so I feel like people just need to let it ride in the car a little bit here and in the club like you got to listen to it in different environments for real but it's really not as bad as people are making it seem I I can agree like people have been making it seem like it's a really bad album Yeah, I feel like, of course, it's not her best work. Like, I do like Fever better than Sugar, but I will say it's not a trash project. Like, I done seen people with some trash projects before. Like, and I'm not saying that because I'm biased because I am a hottie, but it's really not that bad of a project like people are making it seem. Yes, it's not her best work, but it's definitely not her worst. And I feel like she's continuously growing as an artist. I do. What do you think, Moran? I'm a Meg Thee Stallion supporter. I rock with Meg Thee Stallion. Hey, I love Meg Thee Stallion, but I'm, I'm, I, hey, man, I, we we need something else, man. Yeah. I'm yeah. That's I like, hey, I ride with Meg. Whatever the single is, as a DJ, I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna support it. But we all know Meg Thee Stallion well, can come harder. She really could, and she's so talented. She mm-hmm. is. You know what I mean? She really is. Super, but y'all have super to realize, talented. especially with everything that's going on with her case right now, or whatever they got going on. You know, she's paying for everything out of pocket by herself right now. So I feel like. Once she gets the budget back and she's doing these records with like Take Heath and London right. on the track, maybe that's gonna you know but none Metro them, But in. none of them produced all her hits. None of them, like none of those type of people produced any of her hits. Right, except but Juicy J. She, right, but she doesn't have that Bodak Yellow yet, and that's what everybody's waiting on. So she's had hits, but she hasn't had that major, major mm-hmm. crossover hit. And it's I think coming. that's what everybody is waiting on. It's so I feel like whenever she gets the budget right or they figure out whatever is going on, and she gets one of these. 
big time producers or something and they they can figure it out. I think it's definitely coming. I agree as well. It's coming. Megan but, Stallion, we rock with you. We fuck with Megan Stallion yeah, and all we the love hotties. You, girl. We show. do love Megan. I feel like she has a long career ahead of her. Like Absolutely. you have to realize she hasn't even been out that long, mm-hmm. honestly. It's only so, been like a year. Yeah, it's only been like a little over a year. So I think she got this. For sure. What's y'all's bops? Okay, so you know Janae Aiko. Oh God. My pussy yeah. is toxic, my pussy, my <laughs> pussy. You love it. I love it. <laughs> Call 911 for my pussy. It's toxic. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. So she had an album that came out this past week, and it's this one song on there called BS. I think it's like a really, really good song. Okay. Oh, I love that song. And then Doja Cat. <sighs> Street. Fire. Fire. That was one of the song. best songs on the album. Yeah. Um, Fire. Hot Pink is a... a, a <laughs> It is. It's an album. Mm-hmm. She, so those are my two bops. Yeah. Is. Shout out to Doja Cat. Y'all know yeah, I'm a huge Doja, Doja, Doja Cat fan. She hard. Stuff. She hard. The Hot Pink was just an amazing album altogether. Yeah. So yeah, I mm-hmm. agree. Those are some good bops. Well, I, I didn't listen to Janae's album. Of course not. I tried. I, 30 seconds in, that, I was like, But you got to listen to BS. It's a really good song. I think you would like it. Huh. Imagine, little, imagine Janae. And I got her and it's featuring her. Imagine Janae Aiko and like J. Cole on a track. You're going to get the best sleep in your life. Didn't they do a song together? They had. Shit. Sparks Will Fly. Oh, shit. Let me listen to that whole so I can sleep good. But tonight. it's a really good song. But Sparks Will Fly is a fire song. Shit. Add a little her on there. You ain't never waking up. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, y'all cold. And I love her. I do too. She all right, but I just be, she be making me sleepy, man. But I mean, yeah, it's certain shit that you listen to at certain times of the day. And it is certain shit that you listen to when you just trying to be in your wind down mode yeah. and relaxing. I feel like that, those are like very relaxing artists. Yeah, I just, I like I said, I like Janae. You ain't gonna listen to them when you in your car about to go to the club. I'm dead. I try, I just can't get into Janae Aiko. I like her as a person, like I like how she move and I like how she takes her music serious. Like, they were saying like she was like using like those bowls and like meditation sounds with this album. So I like people who take their craft seriously. Mm -hmm. So she's like, when when I talk about artistry, she's somebody I respect because she's an artist and she Mm -hmm. takes it serious. So I always respect her on that level, but I just can't. Like, I like Pussy Fairy, that was about it. Like, yeah, I Pussy listen. Fairy is a good I song. actually listen to Pussy Fairy, but I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm probably not gonna listen to the album. But yeah. that's why I'm not. But I'm not gonna sit here and critique her album because I know I didn't listen to it. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Moran, what about you? Oh uh, man, my bop of the week goes out to the late great Bankroll Fresh man in Bank. We oh trust. yeah, then they oh, drop yeah. a uh, his album. Oh, yeah. yeah. In Bank we trust. Major shout out to DJ Pretty Boy Tank Spins and the whole entire street money worldwide. They had an event last week at the Trap Music Museum. Uh-huh. It was a very good slash emotional event. Yeah. You could just feel like, damn, mm-hmm. you're supposed to be here. I'm like, telling you, you. It. like you right. can really feel the energy in the room. But the song on there for me is this track called Extra. That's mm-hmm. the one. That is definitely he was super work. talented. I would say, like, I really wasn't put onto his music till after he passed away. Mm-hmm. And I was, like, listening to, like, a bunch of his old stuff. I was like, damn, this nigga really was next. He like, was next. Yeah. he was really, really next. And it's like, it just sucks. Yeah, when people don't get to finish writing their story, you know? Right. That really sucks. But, yeah, shout out to him. I'm going to have to listen shout to the album. Yes, check it out. I think y'all would really fuck with it. Y'all I'm would like it. definitely listen to I that. I definitely am. Y'all know I love some trap music. We know. We love the trap niggas, too. Mm. <laughs> Okay, so um, as always, y'all know we like to read. Oh, wait, you want to do the item of the week? Yeah, we can do the item of the week. Let's do the item of the week real quick. So as y'all can see, I got my merch on. Um, yeah, so make sure y'all order y'all's merch. This is a the long sleeve tee. I got it in a medium. And I got, you know. Let me scoot over. I had to. Can you see it? Cash. Hey. Yeah. Team Drea. Yeah, so I got I got me a Team Drea shirt to support my girl because y'all know I be loving my bitch and loving her little commentary. Yes, so. I gotta get my Team Lick shirt. It's on the way. It's on the way. So yeah, make sure you know y'all. Um, it's the link is gonna be in the bio. But yeah, make sure y'all go order y'all's merch and rep for us. We got um coffee mugs. We got phone cases. Yeah, we got pretty much everything. All hoodies. type of yeah hoodies, t shirts, all type of that stuff. So yeah, make sure y'all go. Too. I'm dead. Okay, now you pushing it. Why not? I'm dead. Pussy fairy. 
Anyway, so yeah, as always, um, and I just want to shout out my hair company real quick, Polished Extensions. Uh, shout out to her because, like I said, my hair still, you know, my yeah, lace is kind of lacing today just because I need to go get it redone. I'm getting it redone next week for the Horrible Decision Show, though. But yeah, shout out to Poly Polished Extensions. I'll put the link in the bio for that as well, too. So as always, y'all know that we um, read y'all's questions every week on the show. So if you want your question or advice answered on the show make sure you email us at askpoorminds at gmail.com that's a-s-k-p-o-u-r-m-i-n-d-s at gmail.com so i'm gonna go ahead and read the first one i'm actually really excited to read this one because i read it before i got here i was like bitch 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 okay so it says hi ladies please keep me anonymous especially since i'm not shit i love her already <laughs> I'm currently conflicted and I really need some advice. I'm 24 years old in clinical research, fit and not too bad on the eyes if I do say so myself. My boyfriend is 20 years, 27 years old and we'll be celebrating our fifth anniversary soon. Let me start off by saying I appreciate and adore him. Everything he does for me is a blessing and I always express gratitude every day that God put him in my life. He is currently working in petroleum engineering with his MS degree and killing it when it comes to his career. He is making a yummy salary and has taken on everything I could ever imagine. As soon as we graduated from our HBCU, he moved me out his city in a great apartment in downtown Atlanta, pays the rent, my phone, and my student loans. To top it all off, at the end of the day, I have been accepted to a PhD program at Georgia Tech, and even with the stipend, he has offered to give me money monthly so I don't miss out on self-care now that I have to quit my job and do the program full-time. A dream come true, right? Well, all this sounds great. My only problem is that the others, these other niggas niggas really won't leave me the fuck alone i'm the only one in my group of six girlfriends that isn't single every time we're out at brunch the club or on girl vacations i'm minding my business and there's always a fine ass nigga coming up to me trying to get at me my girlfriends always tell me i'm missing out because i'm settling down so young all of them are experimenting dating multiple men and what it seems they're really happy and carefree and not obligated to any man here in atlanta don't get me wrong, my boyfriend has great sex, makes me laugh, and his family is amazing and so supportive. I just feel so guilty that knowing most of the time, not all the time, but frequently, when I'm out with my friends, there's always a scrumptious-ass nigga trying to get at me. Sometimes I feel like I don't even deserve him and I'm being disrespectful. Even when I tell these niggas I'm in a relationship, as, as, as you girls know, these niggas just don't care. Sometimes, I won't lie, the temptation is crazy, even though I never act on it or cross any of those lines, I'm wondering if the grass is really green on the, on the other side, or am I an ungrateful bitch for even thinking about what it would be like to be single since I'm so young. Mind you, I would never cheat on him, so it's either I stay or we break up. I don't want to lose out on a future husband just for some years to experiment at all, but to be honest, I've never had that quote-unquote hoe phase. And the girl is fucking itching to come out, sis. Please shed a little light perspective since y'all are a little older. Is this a phase? Will I eventually get over the curiosity of what else might be out there and settling down be the right thing in the end, or should I dibble-dab in some dick and be single? Love Loved a confused and young, ungrateful little hussy dussy. Well, at least she knows what she is. Right. Oh. I'm dead. Sis, now, you, this is not a regular relationship that you're in. First of all, this man is going above and beyond for you. And let me tell you something. I'm 30 and I'm still looking for that. These niggas out here, especially in Atlanta, ain't shit. <clears throat> now, I get the feeling because I do feel like in order to be a good partner with somebody, you a whole phase is kind of necessary because if you don't have your whole phase, you're going to be feeling how you're feeling right now. But as an older woman, I can tell you that you do have a good man. You got your BDB, sis. And we are all out here trying to get our BDBs. So my advice is if I could go back and be that age and find a man early, I would, I would do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I could have found my BDB at 24 or 25 and be done and have my nigga and be set up, I would definitely go back and do that. When I tell you you're not missing out on shit, because these niggas ain't shit and they're trash and you have mm -hmm. a good man that is taking care of... Bitch, you living rent-free? You ain't got no bills. You ain't doing... And he about to be giving you leisure money? Girl. Uh, girl, you... I'm telling you. Let me tell you something. Like I said, I'm mm -mm -mm. third... I'm, I've been, I've been through my... Better stop listening to them hoes. Better stop listening to y'all. Let me tell you something. I, I, I've i noticed. And I know. I know for a fact. Because I've dated men who have went through a divorce. Good men. 
and they were like taking care of their wives, but they had their friends in their ear. Like, girl, let's go out, let's do this. Baby, if you got a man at home that's taking care of you, take your ass home. Yeah. For real. And I'm not he being really no, ain't nothing in these I'm streets. not even being no pick me right now because y'all know I'm all about myself and women doing what they want to do and being free. But at the end of the day, I feel like if you're in a like I know that I love companionship. I love to be in a relationship. So it's like when you have everything that most women are looking for, you need to keep that sis. It ain't shit out here, especially in Atlanta. Don't let your girlfriends lie to you because that shit is not all what it's cracked up to be. Being yeah, being course. single is cool and it's fun, but sis, they not having fun. They looking at you and they want what you got. Definitely. Trust me. Absolutely. I think you should definitely stay with your boo. Them other niggas, all them scrumptious ass niggas, all they want to do is fuck. And they probably ain't got and no they probably money. Ain't got no money. So if especially you, at y'all age. Especially <laughs> at y'all age. So if you have a man that's 27 and he's able to do all this financially, this man is only going to get better. Mm-hmm. He ain't even hit his prime. He's 27 yeah. and doing this for you. So imagine when he hit like 35. Baby, you gonna be set for life, and then you have your own career making money. Y'all gonna be a power Y'all couple. Y'all gonna be good, yeah. Y'all gonna be good, girl. It ain't nothing out here, honey. Look, and if you don't want them, baby, I'm coming for your man. You better watch it because you got a BDB. We like little juvies. Yeah. I can give me a little young nigga. But no, all jokes aside, yeah, girl, stay with your man. It ain't nothing out here. Like I agree, one hundred. These men, they not gonna do nothing for you, but leave you with a wet ass, girl. I mean, it's. It's bad. It's, it's bitches out here that got That's factual. four or five million followers and got all these niggas in their DM and they still don't got what you got. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it's hard to find a good guy that cares about who you. cares about you, who's willing to make sure you stray. Yeah. Girl, stay He's with you. He's supporting your man. you while you go to school. Mm-hmm. He paying your student loans. Yes, yeah, sis. It, I, that's I a think good, we all a good one. Yeah, we all collectively agree that bitch, you wildin'. Yeah, you wildin'. <laughs> Fuck that whole tripping, phase. Fuck that whole Cause phase. Cause the whole phase ain't all it's cracked up to be. It sure ain't. Yeah, she tripping. Cause I only got off my whole phase with a bunch of bodies. Hmm. I ain't got shit. But, but you know, some bitches leave their whole phase and got a house, a car. That's true. I left my whole phase with nothing but nothing. And now you got a podcast and you tell ain't us about it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I said you ain't lifted yet. First of all, I'm on, <laughs> I am on the end of my whole phase. I root for Nigeria, baby. It's coming to an end. It is. It definitely is. I know it is. Like I already know who my man gonna be. Like Nigerian, this is my man. Babe. Yes, so. that is my man. I'm rooting for you, bro. I'm rooting for you. I love him. Moran really likes Nigerian. No, babe. let me tell you something though, Moran. I wanted to tell you this. You know what's weird? And I said, this is how I know this is a good man. Everybody that I come in contact with that's met him or I've talked about, they love him. Even my Uber driver, he sent me an Uber, Mm. and the Uber was like, I don't know. He was like, is that your boyfriend or whatever? I was like, you know, I just tell people, yeah, that's my boyfriend. He was like, girl, you." it was a gay guy. He was like, girl, you got a good one. He was like, make sure you drop her off. Make sure, like, he was like, even like when I first sat in the car, he was like, raving about him he was like he was so nice he was so sweet he was like yeah you're picking up my girlfriend and blah 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 so it's like everybody that comes into contact with him they love him i have literally never met not one person that were like mm, lex i'm not sure about him i don't it's just know every time you talk about him you light up so i do like, uh, that's yo, my move. your you voice changes everything excited. i do be excited i'm ready i miss my man okay so anyway Team let's get nigerian babe yes okay so next level let's up okay so the next question says a bdb but i've never seen the d I'm dead. Hey, y'all. I just wanted to start out by saying I love the podcast and listen faithfully at work. Call me Veronica. So here's my situation. I've been dating slash getting to know this guy since the beginning of the year. So about two months. He's tall, handsome, and we have a lot in common and great conversation. From what I can see and tell so far, I'd call him a a BDB. Only issue is I've never seen the D. So I have no idea if it's actually big. Isn't two months a long time to be dating someone and not have tried to fuck? I'm ta- I'm talking seeing each other and going on dates at least once, sometimes twice a week, and we've both been over to each other's places on multiple occasions. Mm. I don't get it. There's a couple of things I can think of. I'm 24 and he's 36. Mm. I have all the same things going for myself as him. He is just on a larger scale, of course. He said that he doesn't care about the age difference, but do y'all think it's possible he's acting timid sexually because he doesn't know how to approach it since it's not his usual? I know for a fact that he's not married or gay or religious and fake saved. I can only think, the only thing I could think of is number one, he doesn't know how to approach it. Number two, he's really not that interested. Or number three, he's really trying to get to know me first before having sex. I don't know. 
I would have been tried to fuck me, laughing my ass <laughs> off. I also don't think I should be the one to make the first move because I like to follow the man's lead in the beginning. And since he's so much older than I am, I'm definitely not trying to be telling him what to do. What do y'all think? Thanks for all your help, Veronica. Um, I feel like maybe he is trying to be respectful. You know, because I, I will say sometimes, you know, older men are different, but sometimes they do be horny, but I don't know him personally. But I feel like, sis, there's nothing wrong with making that first move. Like, if you want to yeah. fuck, let it be known. I don't think so either. Because I, I th- used to be like that, though, when I was younger. Yeah, I think I so was, too. I could too. understand if, you know what I mean, she feel that way. Like, she don't want to be the one to make the first move. But sometimes move, but... you have to. Um, I know my, uh, I had a situation, I don't know if y'all remember, um, a few months ago, I was talking about Throwback Bay, like, the dude I was, like, so happy to fuck mm-hmm. with because I finally pulled him. But, like, the first time we had sex and messed around, it was because, like, I was pressing him. Like, I was like, okay, it's time to fuck. Like, mm-hmm. what's up? You know what I mean? So, I feel like sometimes. Well, I don't think you should do it like that. Well, no, I mean, I didn't do it like <laughs> that, but I was just like, you know, I was, I let it be known that I was trying to have sex. I'm having like, to make sure you a little aggressive. I am a little aggressive, but I started rubbing on that peen right at the table. <laughs> So he knew. He was like, you want to go somewhere else? I want to go home, nigga. I want to go home. <laughs> so sometimes you just got to let it be known. Like, you know, because yeah. sometimes, I mean, for the most part, men aren't shit. But you do come across a gentleman every now and then. Yeah. Sometimes men just want to be gentlemen. So especially with him being older and you being so young, a lot of times, you know, people have the perspective that older men that fuck with younger women are trying to take advantage of them. So maybe he doesn't want you to feel like he's trying to take advantage of you. So I feel like, you know, maybe just be a little more touchy-feely with him and make sure that he knows that you're ready to take that next step. I always just say, just go off of whatever it is that you want to do. Like, mm-hmm. if you ready to fuck the girl, let him know that you ready to put the pussy on him, yeah. period. Just get real tipsy one night, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Liquor always going to do the job, or maybe a little weed. You right, know, I'll tell you what I did. Smoke. Like, after we left dinner, like, he came over to my crib, and I was just like, as soon as I got there, I went and I put on my little... You know, put on a little. Did you booty. put on some lingerie. I put no. I put on the booty shorts and a little. You know. Oh. So I, was I let. Say you was cutting up. So I had to let him. You know, he got to see all the body. <laughs> so he was like, "Oh shit!" And then I poured out the wine. You know what I'm saying? Like I let him. Like you know, when you get home and you put yeah. on the booty shorts, you know what time it mm-hmm. is. Especially because I don't bring nobody to my house. Like I don't invite anybody to my house. So I've been in this new apartment since I've been in my new apartment. I haven't had anybody at my house. Really? Nobody. Not one man, like nobody at my house. But this was in my old apartment. Mm. But yeah, he came over and we fucked. But I was just like throwing those signs out there. So yeah, girl, just just throw them signs. Yeah, out I there. feel like you just gotta let him know that you're ready. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Y'all gonna get it popping. Y'all gonna it's get best it to popping. find out. And I, I don't know for two, for these two months too long for you. Yes. Because I waited three months for some dick one time, and it was just, like, not That's good. why I don't like waiting. I feel like if I'm ready, yeah, if, as long as it. I'm ready, you I, know what I mean? If I'm it. ready, let's do it. Because I don't want to wait two, three months, four I'm months. I'm not waiting on no dick. And then the dick be trash, and mm-hmm. I already like you. Ooh, that's the worst. Let me tell you something. If we have a good first date and shit is going well, well what are we waiting on? I don't give a fuck no, no body count. I'm 30. Is we fucking or not? Nah? If yeah. the vibes is there, is we fucking or not? Nah? No facts. You know I mean, I just feel like it's not that serious. It is not that serious. You know what I mean? So, like I said, girl, if you're ready to fuck, yeah, just throw the, throw the little signs out there. Okay, yeah. Make sure y'all want, if y'all want y'all's question answered on the show, you email us at askpoorminds mm-hmm. at gmail.com. Y'all got anything else to add? Hey, God is the greatest. Amen. 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 And I'm sorry if we offended anybody on this episode, but guess what? We're going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta right. sing. You gotta I sing. I don't think we offended oh, anybody. Oh yeah, I gotta sing. sing. Yeah, because you been leaving the girls hanging. You ain't been singing. The okay, so y'all night. had a, y'all had a request the for me to sing, but I'm not singing that. Uh, Why? Because I just don't want to. Man. I don't want to shine any more light on the situation. Man, okay. song that, Do y'all have any requests? The song that I sent you in the no. group chat. <laughs> sing that. <laughs> Do y'all already? She say she don't want to sing that. I am not singing that because we are not bringing any more light <laughs> today. It's gonna be funny. To be it. Y'all don't have any requests. Uh, maybe maybe I'll start the next episode, y'all. We ain't got no song no, today. No, you got to sing a song. I don't have no song. You don't have no song. Sing a Casey and JoJo song. No, because I try to uh, sing, sing a song. Sing Drew Hill. Oh, I, yes, it was. Wait. The tell me. like. Oh, stay. yeah. Mm, I don't know the words. You don't know tell me. That's all. That's the only part I know. Do that part. You don't do the know step. any of the verse. Well, the song I wanted to sing, Dre said I couldn't sing. What? Because I wanted to do a tribute. I wanted to do a tribute to Nate Dog. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with that? Exactly. Girl, it's either love me now. 
Would you love me if I was down and out? Would you still have love for me, girl? That's why I said no, because I don't think that's your song. <laughs> We'll see y'all next week. I heard a little clip earlier. You a hater. (laughs) We'll see y'all next week. Bye, y'all. Bye.